Hey guys, welcome to the blog. This is my new blog setup. Blog setup. Vlog setup. So somebody asked me, does your freelance course teach you how to deal with clients that approach you to help them with their GoDaddy like web builder account or other template based services? Seems like lately, while I'm trying to get better at coding, I keep getting clients that ask for help with their drag and drop type of web builders and don't want to pay more than a couple hundred dollars and don't seem to understand why I can't build a site exactly to their vision. Frustrating. Yeah, I can see how that's frustrating. What I would suggest to you, well, first of all, as you get better with coding and you get into more web development where you're able to provide functionality like shopping carts, e-commerce integrations, etc. When you start getting into that area and in the freelance space, PHP dominates by a, a long shot, although you can do it with other languages like uh, JavaScript Node or Python, etc. That being said, when you get higher level with your coding skills, you're going to be able to do more functional or functionality related type of development, which means you're going to be able to, to charge more. But that said, as I've mentioned in other videos, web builders are just something to be considered as a tool set. So yeah, so you meet a client, they're only willing to pay two, three hundred dollars for you to slap together something with their Wix or their GoDaddy builder, whatever it is. If it only takes you a half an hour or an hour to do, maybe it takes you two hours and you made 200 bucks, it's 100 bucks an hour, it's not bad. Now you have to understand, a lot of times, or at least a significant number of times, you'll be able to put up a simple system with Squarespace or Wix or whatever, a simple site rather, and then they're going to want more functionality. They're going to I, I want to put an e-commerce store. What am I going to do? Well, that's where you start charging more. Now, if you've established this relationship with them as their developer by helping them with their Squarespace site or whatever web builder-based site, then you're the go-to person. You get that? And there's other things you can get into. You can get into helping them with organizing the site's content. You could charge for that. You could get into uh, hooking into their social strategy. You could help them out with that. The consistent thing you have to learn about in the web development game as a freelancer or in general is that it, it evolves. What we do today as web designers or developers is very different in many respects from what was done 10 years ago or five years before that. The skill sets are very different. I remember way back in the day, a good friend of mine was very successful in the web space, in the web field in the 90s, mid 90s to 2000. Very successful, made a lot of money driving around BMWs and brand new house and all kinds of stuff. And then he stepped away from the game for just like two years. I think it was between 98 and 2001, two, three years. And he came back into the game because he had a terrible divorce and his wife took half and he was, uh, you know, he had to work again. So bad man money management on his part. He spent like crazy. So word lesson here, when you're making a lot of money, save, save. The more you save, the more personal freedom you're going to have. So save, save. Don't expect the gravy train of cash to continue perpetually. Big mistake, always save. And in a short period of time, you find yourself with a big pile of F you money, and then you're living on easy street, trust me. When you have a couple years worth of cash on hand to cover all your bills, aside from your long-term retirement savings, you sleep really well at night, you sleep like a baby, you're able to negotiate contracts much more effectively because you don't need the money. It's such an important thing, but you can check up my video on that if you want to learn more. So he uh, had to get back into the game after about three years of leaving it. And this is back in the time when the technology was changing very rapidly. Today, the web technology has not evolved it does not evolve nearly as quick anymore. In fact, it's pretty stable now since about 2012 with, when HTML5, CSS3 was adopted. The technology, you know, the 90s, it was, this is a slope of how difficult, how quickly technology changed. You know, so every year it was pretty drastic and then started curse, flattening out, flattening out. So now since it's about 212, things are pretty stable. 
HTML5 is exactly the same as it was today in 2018 as it was in 2012. CSS3 is exactly the same. JavaScript pretty much the same. Uh, PHP, we went from PHP 5 to 7, but they're very compatible. Like we took an, an app written PHP 5 and we converted it to PHP 7 in, I don't know, a couple hours work. Not a big deal. So, you know, it's not like it used to be. Anyhow, so he, um, back to the original story. So he went back into the web development game and he realized, whoa, everything has changed. Whoa, whoa everything has changed. He had to relearn a lot because of the rapid change in those days. So these days, the technology is not evolving so quickly anymore, which is good. But the game is evolving in terms of the tool sets where you have the web builders uh, like the Wix and the, and the Shopify, etc. Although we've had these things for years, they're just a little bit more sophisticated, but they still don't replace real web developers at the end of the day uh, or, or high-end web designers. And there's a lot more stuff that come into it now. Now, uh, social strategy is big. SEO is still there, search engine optimization, although it's not what it used to be. It's just different. Again, things are just different. The money that you can make is still big. It's just done in a slightly different way. So if I had a client saying to me, hey, I want to just use a web builder that can help me out, sure, I'll charge you blah, 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 and I'm still making 100 bucks the hour or more, and uh, whatever. Now i got another client in the roster, and I'll leave you with this last freelancing tip. One of the most important things you want as a freelancer is many, many, many clients. You don't want to make the mistake of having just one or two big clients because if you have one or two big clients, they will control you. They will have control over you. And uh, they know it too. They can smell it. So you want to have many small clients. i rather have 100 small clients than five big clients. Why? Because if I lose one small client... I don't care. I have another 99. So, you know, 100 may be a little extreme, but maybe you might have 25 clients that keep you busy. Because what you're also going to find when you're freelancing and you're dealing with the, the clients, they may come to you in, uh, in September and say, okay, here, we want to do this, we want to do this, and you get your first payment, as you should always. And then, you know, so October, they deliver a few more materials. Then you, you deliver some basic stuff and you need the feedback from the client. And they disappear until, uh, until March. Happens all the time. They get busy with things. They, have, you know, they, they, they put you on the back burner. So that's why you got to have many other clients that you can be rotating through and, uh, you know, filling in those gaps when, you know, other clients have dropped off to do something else. Very important that you have a rolling roster, if you will, of clients in your freelance business. Again, this is about personal freedom. Why do you become a freelancer? Because number one, you can make a lot more money as a freelancer. Number two, to me, just as important, if not more important, you have a lot of freedom as a freelancer. You can choose who you work with, the type of work that you do, when you work, how you work, where you work. These are all freedoms that freelancing gives you. Although when you're first starting out, there's a learning curve. But that's why I put out my freelancing course, because instead of you having to spend years figuring out this stuff, you can do my course and you figure it out and, you know, just do the course a couple hours and you figure it all out. Save you a lot of time. One of the reasons I put out my courses is because I want to I want to give you guys what I wish I knew back in those days. You, you heard that expression? If only I knew then what I know now. Oy. So that's what I do. I give you my 20 plus ex years experience as a developer and longer than that as an entrepreneur to save you a lot of the headaches and a lot of mistakes I made so you can just avoid those pitfalls. And uh, if you look at the comments, people will comment under the YouTube videos. People, you know, people say they, they followed my advice and Bob's your uncle. Everything is working cool so fast. They were pretty amazed about how, how well it works. There are some universal principle, principles in lives. They're constants that uh, transcend time and discipline. And that's what I teach you here. And, uh, but I'll have to get into those details in another uh, vlog. All right. Let me know what you think about this vlog. Let me know what you think of this format, the way my new set is, and uh, 
Yeah, that's about it. We'll talk soon. Ciao, guys.